bad parenting news. Uh oh. Submitted by a homegirl from Paramount. What's what up, homegirl? What's good, cookie? I'm not from there, but. I have friends from there. Does that count? E. I grew up next to that. Does that count? Yeah. I know where it's at. Does that count? Paramount Pictures actually isn't from Paramount. I always thought that when I was little. But Paramount means it's super important. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. The father of a missing three-year-old girl left her outside as punishment because she wouldn't drink her milk. Is this considered bad parenting or regular Asian Korean. parenting? What if she's lactose intolerant? Why would she want to drink milk? Well, you what said if she had a tummy ache? very Korean. It's very Korean. So, I mean, like, did your parents yeah, my brother. Oh, all the time. Like, if I caught three? Sleep, like three, that's too old, too. But, you know, it would usually be the backyard. My mom wouldn't. No, it was Wait, the no, front door. Was, she did that front yard, too. My mom told me the story where my brother, he was, like, saying he was going to run away. I think he was supposed to clean up his dishes. I can't recall right now but he was like you're supposed to clean up your dishes or or whatever and he goes no I don't want to and then my mom's like I'm, I'm warning you and he just kind of like did his own thing he goes fine I'm gonna leave he says his little little colorful backpack starts putting his favorite toys in my mom lifts him up she goes oh that stuff is mine she strips my brother butt naked in the middle of winter and kicks him outside and she said that like, he was so stubborn like for the first like I forgot how many how much time passed he didn't make a single fucking noise and then finally, he just starts crying out of nowhere. But my mom stripped him butt ass naked and kicked him out to the front. Of was she like, "What a tough boy"? <laughs> she was like, "Do that to him." It, no, it made her more mad because she was like, "Oh, he he won't break until like something bad happens. So until he started freezing his ass off, he started crying." Man, I remember as soon as my mom would shut the door, I would start banging like, "I'm never gonna get back in." <laughs> <laughs> I promise I won't do it anymore. <laughs> I know. You kids are so dumb, huh? Yeah. I, I really believe I was just gonna be left outside. <laughs> Fuck. Game over. So, this is Sharon. She's three years old. What is she? Ah, Sharon! Filipino? Uh, Indian. Indian. Oh, well, I was way off. Hispanic or Filipino? So, this little girl, she's from Richardson, Texas, which is a suburb of Dallas. According to her father, around 3 a.m., she would refuse to drink her milk. 3 a.m.? So, Why isn't she asleep? And I'll explain in a second. And so, as a punishment, he sent her out to the backyard to stand near a large tree. And then he says 15 minutes later, he went back to check on her and that's when she was missing. But instead of calling the cops then and there, he ends up going inside of his home, does some laundry, tells the wife, hey, the girl's missing. And they wait until after 8 o'clock a.m. to call the police because they just Whoa, figured that she was going to come back. That's weird. And he, the father also mentioned three that... Three years old? Oh, oh, she'll GPS her way back home. But what if Chupacabra got her? The father also mentioned that he did know that there were there was a coyote activity in that area. Oh, my. And he didn't care until 8 in the morning. Exactly. He oh. confessed to all this information? Sorry. Yeah, that's what he was telling the cops. What a moron. He doesn't have a fence in his backyard. It was like an alley type of thing. I'm not sure exactly. Was she found? He's like Alive? A, he's she's, a serial killer. So she's still missing as far as I know. Still what the fuck? Um, this is the father. Did she get abducted? So that's what they're thinking. Like maybe has a someone... Mexican post. At 3 a.m. though, she probably walked away. A neighbor said that this couple had been struggling to have a kid for a long time. They finally had a kid who is now four years old. And then they're saying that they felt that since God gave them that baby as a miracle baby, that they could help another little one that doesn't have a family. So they went to India. They adopted Sharon. And when they adopted her, uh, she was really malnourished. Uh, she has developmental issues that, and limited communication skills. Oh no! So they're just like really... That makes sense why she wouldn't want to drink her milk. And she so, didn't know what milk was. Yeah, and then he's saying like they would feed her at all hours of the day just to get her oh, to get nourished again. Yeah. They should have fed her a mango lassi. Mmm. Ooh, that shit's she would have like mango lassi. Yeah, and so... It's from our hometown. People are devout Christians. That means nothing to me. Devout Christians. And the church people, they went over to their house and they were just praying and stuff. But now, apparently, there are reports coming out saying that these parents are no longer cooperating with the police. Which is fucking fishy, right? So we're like, what the hell's happening? And so the that four-year-old that they have is now in the custody of a family friend. Oh, they found the kid. Damn. No, 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 no. They had oh, that's a, the that's biological. Oh. They couldn't have one, and then finally they had one. That kid's four, and then they adopted it's another. It's kind of extreme for yeah. sending a kid out into a backyard with a bunch of coyotes at 3 a.m. <laughs> and sorry. developmental issues. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of like you're not going to drink your milk and like then like, go outside. It sounds like they were at wit's end. <clears throat> <clears throat> and then they were like, we can't deal with this kid anymore. Let's well, kill the is, kid. The, oh. That's what they were thinking, maybe? Let's kill the kid? Well, it hasn't been reported yet that the parents are suspects. But they are saying that the mom gave a different account to the, to the police saying that her daughter was asleep during the time that she went missing. 
But the father is saying, no, I sent her outside, and then I went inside and did laundry. Is it fenced off their backyard? They don't specify that. But that's okay. I mean, that still doesn't, like, uh, debunk her story because if he was sending her outside, she wouldn't know. Yeah, but it's you know. just still, like, now... And then, also, both parents are working with different attorneys. So that's also a little... They weird. killed her! You think so? Sounds too fucking fishy to me. That is so sad. So this is... Because they are not uh, worried. They're not like, oh, she's missing. Let me call the police. That's what's the like, it's biggest, like, fishiest part. She'll come back. Comes out, Where's my daughter? I forgot to do laundry. And then goes back inside. Like, I don't get it. Like, That's true. A out. responsible parent, if you send them outside, you would, you, still, them. you would still peek through the blinds yeah. to make sure that they're suffering. And if they keep suffering, you're like, okay, good. But if they're out there fucking making sandcastles, you go out there and you fucking Beat pour the cold water out. on them or something. Yeah, so the father was arrested and charged with child endangerment, but now he's out on bail and he has like a, a monitor bracelet or yeah. ankle, anklet. Like a house arrest bracelet. Thing. Yeah, so now he has that and they're just still looking for the little girl. Question, now that you two are parents, do, do these stories affect you differently now or is it? Yeah, absolutely. No. So before you were cold. <laughs> so before you were cold hearted, but now you have a child, you feel And now you grew a heart. No, I just couldn't relate. Like the way you guys probably can't relate. Like you, you obviously feel bad, right, for this child. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Understand with children, they don't, they don't understand a lot of things. They're very helpless, right? But now when it's your own, you're just like, oh my god, you put your kid in that situation. That's why you always are. So do you feel like I know what they're going through? Sometimes my my kid stresses me out. I wanna. I'm not there yet. Maybe yeah. Tiff knows. No, I think what she's saying is like when things like this happen to other kids, you immediately put your kid in that position, and you think of like, holy shit, what if that like? Yeah. I don't ever do that. It's crazy. I don't think I don't put my. Because you're a little abnormal. Oh, I'm not. No. Okay. You're a little oh. abnormal. So I'm not allowed to speak. You can, but then that's why you're you're deemed the pedo weirdo because you say what? some weird shit. Have I'll you ever you got so angry at your child where you're thinking, I'm just gonna drop this bitch off somewhere? No. Okay. I really? Oh. Wow, you're so patient. No, I felt like. Because my parents have told me that directly. Yeah, to me, too, me too. Me too. Me yeah, too. Like so, no. it's not like stuff they told, they kept inside for for like 30 years. They've told me to my face. Mine too. No, I've, had, yeah. I've had experiences when Isaac was going through his temper tantrums around like three or four. Where I remember it was one time I was in the grocery store and he just would not stop crying and I wasn't there alone like I couldn't just drive off I went with someone else. Duck tape. And, and then I just was outside and I was just holding him and I was sobbing myself because I'm like fuck what do I do I don't know what to do oh my god this kid's driving me crazy what the hell. What did you try? That's like the furthest I think in that moment I did feel like. Fuck, I give up. I don't know what to do. I can't be a mother. I suck. Look at my kid. He's just crying and crying and crying. Because you also didn't have that male support in your life at the other time. Because And I was like, set, no, how old, is he, how old is I? He was three? 20. I think I was, 20? Yeah, 20. That's when you need the guy to come in and beat the fucking kid's ass. Yup. <laughs> Shut up. When the guy comes in and like, hey, listen, I know that you're hurting, but you're going to be a lot more pain if you keep crying. <laughs> I mean, I Is that what your parents told you? I can't wait to say that phrase because it's so dope. But that's why we can't reason. Yeah. We don't know how to reason. I think like I'll reason up to a certain extent, but I still want to say the lines that my parents said to me to my kid. Why? Because I brought those you into famous one-liners. Huh? It helped you? It did, but those... I don't think so. It's so know, divisive. It. You know what I mean? Like, think about that it. though. Look at that. It helped you. That's how you break all your phones every time you get yeah. pissed. No, it but totally that's, works. Come on. That line's so I cool. think David's a pretty good human being. Yeah, you're also fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really I thank you. See, I'm a great par uh, to be parent. Wait, don't say that. People are gonna think Mariel's pregnant. Oh, she's not pregnant. <laughs> but yeah, I would like to say those lines though, because they're very, they're very poetic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. It's like fucking word art. You I found you in a dumpster. Makes me <laughs> feel great. Yeah. Uh, no, think about that. It's like I'm glad and, that you're. Crying. And why do they all say the same thing? Like that, it's not that creative because it's all it's all the same shit. Yeah, it's across every single Asian I country they say that. Oh uh, yeah. Vietnam, yeah. Korea, Japan. It's like in some old Paris. ancient scroll where a guy just wrote it. Yeah, I found you in a dumpster. <laughs> Confucius <laughs> say you are not my son. Yeah. I think the only lies that I can remember that I've told Isaac is just like the innocent ones about Santa and the Tooth Fairy. But I don't think I've ever made. Up things like that. I never believed in the Tooth Fairy or Santa Claus. I did. I didn't either. I, I believed yeah. in them. My parents did a good job shielding me and making a magical world. My mom did that on accident uh, with my with my nephews this weekend. She was telling us what she would do with us in front of them, and I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> 
I'm like, but Santa Claus is real. She goes, and she caught herself. She's like, yup, it is. I was just holding the present for him. Because oh, <laughs> wow. my nephews were like, what? I, yeah. got, I got in trouble in kindergarten because I told another kid that he was dumb for the Santa Claus thing. Dan, you've mm -hmm. always been David. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I didn't, well, my parents didn't teach me about it. That's not a Korean fucking thing, you know? So they're like, it's a oh, this, thing. this guy comes here and he comes down a chimney. I'm like, that's Your parents fun. were like, we paid for this shit, <laughs> not this fucking white man. Yeah, that's what it really was. Like, you joke, but that's seriously what it is. Wait, but aren't you like Christian or something? Don't you? Santa has nothing Santa's to do with Santa's not Christian. No, I mean like, like generally Christians also believe in Santa Claus, Santa, no. Or like they practice no. that tradition of Christmas. True. Christmas is all about Christmas Jesus. though. Yeah, it's a different Santa Christmas. is a whole different thing. Yeah, Santa's not Christian. It's just American, right? Or European? It's like European or yeah. Germanic or something like that. I don't that. know all those people that were tripping out over the Starbucks cups because it was like no more like Christ in it. I don't know. I don't know. Well, they're fucking stupid, but once again, I was Korean Christian too, so that's different. You know yeah, what I mean? I don't know. Like, I'm not Korean. I wouldn't. A know. lot of these like religious <laughs> stuff too, it's like culturally tied as well. Like if you go to a Korean church, Christian church, it's very Korean Christian. Versus white Christian. Yeah, that's true. Like culture and religion starts to mix together. So. It's okay for your pastor to smack you here and there. Oh, 100%. I remember when I found out that Santa wasn't real and it was just parents giving you gifts, like in the first grade or something, I felt like I had to be a whistleblower. So in my class, I was like, teacher, I have something to say. And then I told everyone, <laughs> Santa's not real. The parents oh. do it. And, I, and they were so mad at me. And then all the kids were like, what? And I was like, I had to be honest. It's Jesus said. <laughs> so I was so conflicted because you're taught not to lie and you have to do you have to be honest and at the same time something that was fucking so lying was happening on Christmas. Yeah, even the tooth fairy concept, right? You know how you, they would put that dirty ass tooth yeah. underneath your pillow? <laughs> Never did that. My mom would just rip it out of my fucking face and then give me money. It wasn't like wait for the tooth fairy to come. It was more like Here's a dollar, you know, so I was just wait. What was the point of the money then? Like because wait. you didn't cry. You did a good job. Oh, so I didn't know that that other like people got money because the tooth fairy would come and give them money. My mom, I would try to rip out my, all my teeth so I could be rich. Oh. I, I didn't believe in Santa, but I did believe in the tooth fairy because my mom always gave me money. And I would like set up tests because my bed was next to the window. So I was like, this time I'm gonna lock the window. Yeah. And I would lock the window and I'd go to sleep and I'd wake up, I still got money? And I'm like, oh shit, the tooth fairy is real. But Santa Claus, I was like, you guys are so stupid, I can't believe you believe in Santa. I wish I had those moments though, man. Like I never got to have that. Like these... You're not gonna let your kids have it either? Oh no, Mariel said that she, like if we have kids, that they're definitely gonna believe in it. Well yeah, Mariel's fucking Disneyland. Yeah, so I'm, well when she, she still believes in that shit. Yeah. When we go to Disneyland, <laughs> What I view at Disneyland is different from, from her. When I see I see gray building, worn out blue, worn out pink. She Tinkerbell comes to her. Pink, welcome. That's what she sees in her head. Everything's magical there. Yeah, not to me. I'm like expensive, expensive. She doesn't need shrooms. Yeah. She got her imagination. And then Mickey Mouse comes out. Hey, Mariel, come here. Thanks for watching guys and those are our thoughts. What are your thoughts? Don't forget to comment below. We want to know what you guys are thinking but don't write anything that will make us sad or make us mad because after all we're just kidding news and we're a very happy channel. For the last video, click up here.